Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am going to make a quilt block and I'm following a video. One of my own! <laughs> I'm going to recreate a block that I did and I learned something from my own video. I wanted to do a four patch wonky block. It was going to be a stack and whack. And I thought, I think I've done a four patch wonky and I looked it up and I thought, I must have done it the way I was going to do it today. Today I was going to just stack four squares and cut in one direction and in another direction and swap one and put them all back together. But that's not what I did in the other video. I made one cut, sewed them together, swapped, and then did another cut. And that's a much, uh, much less sewing that way. Much less sewing. There's a lot less sewing that way. Let's put it that way. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to just recreate my own video. I'm allowed. I'm allowed to do that. That other one was almost four years ago at the time that I'm recording this one. And it did have 12,000 views, which was good for me back then. But it only earned a total of forty-one dollars. That's sad. I don't know if I've ever had any kind of a quilting video that earned that little, and that's in you know almost four years. So um, that's terrible. So I'm going to recreate it, and I'm going to have fun with the analytics to see if this one will perform better. For sure, I'm going to be including the words "stack and whack" because that did well for me before, and it's not in the other one's title and it's not in the keywords either. So I'm just gonna have fun with this and you know I might start going through my old videos and recreating stuff. Huh? Alright, let's get started. I'm going to do a stack and whack wonky four patch quilt block. We're going to be making four at once. I don't know what size I used in the other video because I didn't like really watch it word for word. I skimmed through and uh, got to the parts where I was cutting and stuff. Uh, I think though it ended up being, I think I said I was going to be able to trim to nine so it had to be bigger than nine. I'm starting with eight inches this time because I went in my box of fabric that I'm allowed to use. <laughs> I put certain fabrics in that box and that's what I use for tutorials. I had a couple of squares that I could get eight inches out of so I went with that and I picked all like shades of golden yellow. I thought that would be cool. So let's just start. We're going to stack these one on top of the other all right side up. And I don't think that it matters the order, but for the hell of it, I'm going dark, light, dark, light. But you don't have to worry about that. That's just what I felt like doing. This one is hard to see if it's the right, uh, right side up, and it is. Now we're going to make one cut in this direction. And I had used like a piece of construction paper in the other video. Do go watch the other one. You might, I don't know, you might like the way I did it there better. But I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to make a vertical cut, a wonky cut. I just know you don't want to go like real close to the edge because we're going to be having a seam. So I would say no more than um, an inch and a half away from there about. And as wonky as you feel like. Let's do that. Now I'm taking the top one, putting it underneath. Now we're just going to reattach these like this. And one thing I didn't know way back then that I know now is you want to be lining up this cut edge. Let me just uh, move these out of the way for a second. And I did mention that, you know, it looks weird here, but this is the edge you want to match up. But if you pull it down a little bit, if you imagine that you're coming in at a quarter of an inch, put your thumbnail like about where a quarter of an inch is. That's where you want your fabrics to be meeting. So actually this one has to be up a little bit. See if I go point to point, it's going to come out not even at the top. So forget what I said a few seconds ago. Slide it up a little bit and go in about a quarter of an inch. Now, are my two fabrics touching? Yes, they are. That's a good way 
to do it. And you can see I have a little bit of a tip showing down here. See the little tip showing at the bottom? And at the top, it's sticking up above the yellow. That's what you want it to look like. Now I'm just going to go and sew right here. If it comes out uneven, that's okay, because you're trimming at the end anyway. Now see how even that came out? Right there at the top and the bottom. Like I said, I just don't think I knew that way back then. I don't know. I might have done it in that video. I don't know if I said it or not. Okay, take this one, and here's what I did in the other video. So I'm doing it again. I'm just going to put it upside down and move it. We don't want to swap the order. Now I'm just going to do that to the rest of these. I'm going to sew this one to this guy, and then this one to the next one, and so forth, until I have all four done. As soon as I have one done, I'm going to put it upside down on this one, so the order remains the same. I have my stack, and I'm going to turn it up, and I'm going to just uh, try to lay these out a little bit evenly. Now this one didn't match up quite like I wanted on the bottom. And then this guy goes here. I did um, the seams in opposite directions in the other video. And I'm not doing that here. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't feel like it. I didn't even press. See, I'm into finger pressing now. If you were to, if you were to change this and you don't know which way it was supposed to be, don't worry about that. It shouldn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to cut in the other direction, and I'm just turning it like this to make it easier, and again, wonky in any way I want. And now we're taking two, one, two, and putting them under. And we're putting everything back together. I did a pretty good job on some of these. Now, if you match up your top and bottom, your intersection is not going to match up perfectly. These are wonky cuts. It's not meant to match up. So don't freak out about that. Now this one, the center happened to match up. But look, I'm off on the top. See? See what I mean? So I'm going to be trimming anyway. We end up with uh, four blocks. And look what I noticed. Now I stacked dark light, dark light. If you're going scrappy all the way with all different prints, then don't worry about it. But if you notice, the darks are touching, the lights are touching. So if we would have gone maybe dark, dark, light, light, or dark, light, light, dark, I would have to play with it with construction paper to see. Like, I'm sure there's a way we could have done it so that maybe the two darks were kitty corner and the two lights this way. You can use construction paper to practice. I just didn't think I needed to do that. But um, you can do like weird wonky pinwheel type things. Let me trim first so we'll know what size. Now I'm going with my most crooked cut one so I can uh, get down to that. So it looks like I'll be able to go down to seven inches. And again, this is wonky. You don't have to take it off evenly on both sides. You can uh, take more off on one side and then when you uh, sew it together, the quilt looks more scrappy because it's a scrappy quilt too. It's wonky and it's scrappy and it was stack and whack. The best of all worlds. So let me just take these all down to seven inches. I really like these. Now I did take some off all four sides because I wanted all four sides to be even. But like I said, you can shift them and take more off one edge than the other just to make them that much more scrappy. Now if you were to make four more and you're using all different kinds of prints, you can alter your wonky cuts. And then those will be, you know, different angles. And then you just mix them all up. Now this is like all matchy-matchy. 
but if you had, you know, four different blocks because you used other prints, it would look very much different. I like the pinwheel look, but I wish these were light. So maybe three lights and a dark? Maybe that would be cool. The pinwheel would pop more. See, the pinwheel is here. Let's see if we go with something light for the pinwheel, putting all my lights pointing in of that same pattern. The pinwheel is certainly wonky. I don't know. It's up to you, however you want to do it. We can always put like, whoops, like this, which is usually what I like to do. Nope, that's not it. Like this. These two prints are pointing in, and those same two prints are pointing out. That looks, you know, scrappy to me. <laughs> there are very many choices, and it's more fun when you have other prints in the mix also. I hope you learned something by watching my two videos. I'm going to make you watch the other video. That's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye!